Never before in history has there been so much money printing by all the central banks at the same time. Uh, we've had money printing before here and there and sometimes many places, but never have you had so much money printing by so many central banks, so much borrowing, so much spending. So this is unique in that period, just the magnitude of it. And <laughs> whether we like it or not, all of that money sloshing around has to go somewhere. Doesn't matter. Those are the facts. Now, I don't particularly like it because it's going to come to an end someday. And I've been around long enough to know that when it comes to an end, a lot of people are going to suffer. Maybe even me. I mean, I hope I don't. But I do know that a lot of people are going to suffer and suffer badly. And eventually, well, eventually they run out of trees. If they keep printing money and printing money and printing money. Eventually something happens and it comes to an end. And this will come to an end too. All of the signs are starting to gather. Bubbles are starting to form. New people are rushing into the market and telling their friends, oh, there's this new thing called the stock market. And it's so much fun and it's so easy and you can make money. And they all rush in and then SPACs, SPACs come around often at the end of long bull markets. SPACs have been around for 300 years, but they often rise again whenever there's a long bull market. I mean, this is not my first rodeo. I've seen all this before, but even if I hadn't, you can look it up, read about it. It always happens and it's happening again. But Elliot, it does always come to an end eventually. Well, it, various and sundry things, this war can cause uh, people to get out of to get out of markets. Central banks can realize the mistake. They can change their mind and start stop printing money and start raising interest rates, start cutting back. Various things have caused this to happen to happen in the past. It used to be a signal that some people used was when the central bank raised interest rates three times. One, two, three. First time scared people, but then it rallied. Second time scared people, rallied again. But the third time was out. You better get out. Now, who knows? Who knows? I don't know if that's going to be the case again this time, uh, but I'm certainly watching like everybody else. I haven't sold out yet, haven't sold short yet, but I'm certainly worried because I see bubbles forming in many countries and many asset classes. It's uh, happening everywhere. I mean, not everywhere, but nearly everywhere. The Chinese, amazingly enough, have been less crazy than the rest of us. They've been a little more restrained, but even they have certainly borrowed and printed and spent a lot of money. Nearly everybody has been doing it. I'm sure we get, if I looked around, North Korea hasn't been doing it, but most, nearly most places have been have been getting involved to some degree or another. We often uh, may go the other way. We have the correction and then we have the central banks panic and they print even, even, even more money. And then we have the wild and blow off. Often we have blow offs in market when they get out of hand. Comes the time where just everything goes up every day. It used to be called a blow off. I guess it still would be called a blow off if we have one. Sure, why not? If the central banks panic, which they might, if things do go down for, you know, all they care about are their jobs. They don't care about you and me. They care about keeping their jobs. So if they suddenly get worried, they could print even more money and buy even more assets. Sure. By now, we've had blow offs in history all over the world. It has happened many times. My present inclination is that I would expect a blow off before this ends. If you want to survive, you just stay with what you know. Because when things start going wrong, if you don't know what you're doing, you're really going to get whipsawed all sorts of different ways. If you don't know what's happening and you don't know what you're doing, get out. I mean, you don't have to stay in the markets all the time. Yeah, you might miss something for a while. So what? I promise you, it's better to miss something for a while than to lose everything when things go really wrong. So my advice is, just stay with what you yourself know. And if you don't know, stay out. If you want to jump in and out, go to it. Maybe you can go on the internet or the TV or something. It's not the way I do it, but who knows? I have to stay with the fundamentals of markets that I have seen over the years and read about over the years that they, these things do happen. 
And at the end of long bull markets, we sometimes do have blowouts. So we have a lot of new people coming in and getting very excited and carried away. And they do strange things. Uh, I've been around long enough to know this can happen and try to judge it and try to get it right. Well, there is no question that America is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. That is not good. It's We had big debts at the end of World War II, but we also had gigantic savings, which had been forced by the Depression and by the war. During the war, there were all sorts of controls and restrictions. And so America had big savings offsetting its big debt. And we paid off the debt with the savings after the war because we had all this capacity. We built a lot of factories during the war. So America had capacity, savings to offset the debt. We don't have any savings now. We don't have any excess capacity or much excess capacity now. No, no, this is a very different situation from the late 1940s. We are the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. We are overextended militarily all over the world. We have troops in over 100 countries. We certainly didn't have troops in over 100 countries in the 1940s. So we are doing things which may cause us to have problems down the road. They certainly have in history caused other countries to have problems. And if that's the case, the end of the American empire may be a bit of a stretch, but it certainly could be the top in the 1920s the UK was the richest, most powerful country in the world. There was no number two. 50 years later, they were bankrupt. IMF had to fly to London airport and bail them out, literally bail out what had been the richest, most powerful country in the world only 50 years before. So it has happened throughout history, it can happen, will happen. When it happens to us, I don't know, but I do know it's going to happen to us because I can look out the window and see the debt. Look at all that debt. You know, and it's not getting better, it's getting worse. America is certainly making a top. I don't particularly like saying it, but I have to deal with facts. But I don't think we, Mississippi River is going to dry up, go away. I don't think the Rocky Mountains are going to collapse. America is still going to be there, but it'll certainly be different just as the UK was different. I certainly can see inflation is here. I can certainly see gigantic money planning, which has always led to inflation throughout history. So, yes, I certainly expect inflation. I'm prepared for inflation. I, I own some silver. I own some gold. I own commodities. You know, I've certainly been investing in commodities. Commodities is the only asset class that are not expensive now. Bonds are a bubble. Bonds have never been this expensive in history. Stocks are beginning to form some bubbles. Property, oh my gosh, go to Korea, go to New Zealand, go many places. Property is a huge bubble in many parts of the world. Commodities are the only thing that are not. I mean, silver is down 60% from its all-time high. Sugar is down 60%. Many commodities are still down a lot. So that's the only place I know of where there's not a bubble and where things are still cheap. And historically, money printing has led to inflation. And if you own the things that go up in price, you might even make a lot of money. You know, if we're going to have electric cars, electric cars use a lot more copper than, than petrol, than gasoline cars. So there are ways to make money, I hope, uh, if one is attentive and stays stays prepared. I mean, history usually doesn't repeat itself. It does rhyme, of course. Uh, whether it's like the 70s or not, I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter if commodity prices go up. They went up in the 70s, but they've been up many times in history. You go back through history, you'll see we've had long periods when commodities go up for a while, then they go down for a long period of time. Maybe we're in one of those periods again. You own them and they go up. You don't care what it's like. All you care is, oh my gosh, they're going up and I own them and I'm making money. I don't know if it's like, we certainly had a lot of money printing them, had a lot of excess spending then, but we've never had spending like we have now. I don't think we've ever had money printing like we're having now. With those guys in Washington, you know, they keep getting us into wars. Afghanistan failed, Iraq failed, you know, Vietnam failed. We keep getting into wars. We kill a lot of people and we lose a lot of money. And yet the guys in Washington don't seem to learn their lessons. You know, history's pretty clear. 
that whenever countries have gotten overextended militarily and financially and politically, it often leads to big, big changes. Not necessarily for the good, maybe for the other side, it leads to good changes. The Germans had a wonderful time when Rome got overextended, it went into decline, it started collapsing. The Germans had a great time. The Romans didn't. <laughs>